In this video, we will learn about test benches and how test benches work in VHDL and how to use test benches to verify your designs and circuits. So let's begin with it. So first off, I have created a file called NAND underscore TV. Uh, it's a test bench file. Test bench files are uh, not different from normal VHDL files. Uh, so TV stands for test bench. You can name it anything, but I have named it NAND underscore TV. So the very first two lines are simple. They will be a normal, uh, yeah, they will be a normal lines. And uh, so how is testing done in VHDL? So uh, what we'll do is we'll create a class. We'll create a class which will instantiate a NAND gate and use the object of the NAND gate to check whether it's working correctly or not. So let's do that. So Let's instantiate, I mean, let's make a class first. So I'll call, call the class as entity test bench. And uh, so this entity doesn't have any inputs or outputs as such. Uh, it's an empty class. So I'll just end it, uh, end it right away. So it will instantiate the NAND gate in its behavioral part. So let's write its architecture architecture, let's call it TV, where TV stands for test bench behavior of test bench is. And now we need to instantiate the NAND gate. So had this been C++, what we could have done is just uh, a hashtag include NAND gate or like the class, but things are different than VHDL. So what we do is, we tell VSTL that there exists some entity called NAND gate and we'll provide you that entity in compilation, like during the compilation phase. So we tell VSTL that there's a component called NAND gate. And because you're defining the component of the NAND gate, you need to provide it with the input value, the input and output uh, structure as well, like the input and output interface. So we'll just provide it with that. So important thing is that this input and output structure has to match the input and output structure over here. So, okay, the variable names don't matter. Like X, Y, Z can be renamed to ABC over there, but the data types and in the order of the input and output variables do matter. Uh, yeah, so we, we uh, tell VSTL that there's a component NAND gate somewhere and we'll provide it to you later. And we just end our component. So, uh, yeah, we just end our component over here. So now we can begin the architecture. So let's talk about how exactly will we test our, uh, test our component. So the first step is, to instantiate. So now that we have told PSTL that there exists some NAND gate, the first step is to uh, create an object, create an object of NAND. The second step is to vary the inputs of NAND and read the output for different inputs and check if they are correct. So Let's talk about the uh, second step first. How will how will we vary the inputs of the NAND gate and read the outputs for uh, different inputs? So, uh, had this been uh, had this been C plus plus, what you could have done is like once you have instantiated some object, you would have just done say say obj is the object, then you would have just done obj dot get and and say say x1 and x2 and you will call this for different x1 x2 that is how would it ha that, 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 that is how you would have done in c++ but uh, in vstl things are a bit different so what we do in vstl is we uh, say we connect the inputs of the object with say signals signals are like uh, yeah, we connect them with signals and then vary those signals. So 
So instead of using the same object as in uh, instead of doing calling an object dot uh, get and what uh, like different times, we'll connect that object to signals and then change those signals. Uh, what I mean to say is that uh, we'll have something like this. So if obj is the object, then say the inputs are x y z over here for the NAND gate. Then we'll connect the input one to say x1, input two to say x2, and say the output to uh, g. So now we will change x1, x2, and keep reading from g. So the moment we change x1, x2, the value of g will change. That is how it is done in VHDL. So I'll explain a bit like why will it change or like what is it, what exactly is happening. But for now, like uh, I'm just explaining the uh, brief overview of what is happening exactly. So the first thing is to create, okay, so now let's get to the coding part. So first thing is to create an object of the NAND gate. So how do you create an object? So first of you name the object, I am calling it DUT instance. DUT stands for device under test. And you specify the uh, component, so it's NAND gate over here. And the next thing is to map the inputs to some signals. So for that, we have to create few signals over here. So let's define our signals that we uh, said over here. So signal x1, x2, and g. And don't forget to write the data type of the signal. So SV logic. And for uh, to make it more clear, I'll just write this on a, on a separate line because to denote that it's uh, an output. Yeah. So we have to map the inputs of this NAND gate, uh, inputs and outputs of this NAND gate to these signals. So how is that done? That is done by using something called as a port map. So we write port map over here and map the inputs and outputs to our signals. So now pay, pay good attention to this part. So what we write inside is a mapping from the inputs and outputs to our signal. So, uh, so we do something like this. So the left hand side of an of this uh, arrow is the input or output of the component. So over here it's x, y, z. So the left hand side is x and x should map to x1. This denotes that x1 is now linked to x. Similarly, x2 is linked to y and g is link, linked to z. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's, that's how we link our inputs and outputs to these signals. So now changing x1 and x2 should provide different input to uh, DUT instance. And similarly, we'll get a different g value of g for different x1s and x2s. So now that we have done this, now we need to vary uh, x1 and x2 and keep reading from g. That is the uh, next step. So, uh, so now I'll, I'll tell you an important fact about uh, VHDL coding in VHDL. So unlike normal coding languages like C or C++, where statements are executed uh, sequentially from top to bottom, we, in VHDL, uh, there are two styles of coding. There's the uh, like sequential way of coding and there's a concurrent way of coding. So over here in a NAND gate, all these statements, they are actually concurrent statements. They are not sequential statements. What I mean to say is they happen in parallel. They work in parallel. They, they are not sequential statements. It's not that this line will be, uh, this line will be uh, executed before this one. So what VHDL does is whenever 
some variable in a statement changes its value, that statement is re-evaluated. That is what VHDL does. I'll repeat myself. Whenever a variable changes its value, the statement is re-evaluated. It will be evaluated again. So, which is why on varying x, x1 and x2 over here, the inputs are changing, like the values of x and y are changing. Had this been sequential programming, the values of x and y would have been fixed. I hope I'm making my point clear. Why changing x1 and x2 is changing x, like we'll be changing x1 and x2 over here, like in the bottom part, but it doesn't matter. It will still change x and y because whenever you will change x1 and x2, this statement will be reevaluated. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so how do we do it? Like, how do we uh, change x1 and x2? So, that's very simple. Uh, so, what we do is that, uh, so, so first we assign, say, x1, say, a value of 0. Uh, so, okay, so for, so test a NAND gate, it's a two input NAND gate. So, we need to test four situations, like, x1, x2 being 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. These are the four situations and the outputs should be, uh, yeah, for 1, 1, it should be 0 and for the rest of them, it should be 1. That's the truth table of a uh, NAND gate. So we expect that, like the value of g to be that. So, uh, so yeah, so first we have to provide those inputs in those order. So say, uh, in each, so first I say set x1 to 0 and x2 to 0 as well. And uh, yeah, so the next input should be uh, say 0, 1. Uh, uh, let's say the next input is 0, 1. And the other inputs are okay. Uh, Yeah, so these are the four inputs that uh, we have to use. So essentially, I'm assigning 0, 0, 0, uh, I mean x1, 0, x2, 0, then x1, 0, x2, 1. Like these are the four possibilities that we have. So uh, yeah, so I'll just end our uh, architecture over here. But hold on, like didn't I say that these statements will be run in I mean, these statements are concurrent. So like this logic over here is like, if this isn't uh, well-defined because because these are these won't run sequentially, right? So you are assigning x1, 0 over here and x1, 1 over here. So it doesn't make sense. So what we would want to do is like run these statements sequentially. We want these statements to run sequentially. Essentially, we would want to first provide the input 0, 0 after that we would like to provide the input 0 1 and so on like these statements have to be executed sequentially so for sequential execution in vhdl we use something called as a process so process begin over here and end over here yeah Another important thing is that if you look over here, like we also need some time to read the output from G. Like these statements after being executed sequentially, like uh, after the first input, first set of inputs is zero, zero. After this is being uh, executed, we want to wait for some time to read from G. So that is done by the wait statement. So we'll just tell VHDL to wait for one nanosecond. And we'll do this after, yeah, we'll do this after all four of them. Yeah. So now how will we read from G? So to read from G, uh, we'll have to run a simulation. Like we'll have to generate a waveform, which we'll learn in the next video. 
Thank you.